Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we are going to be talking about managing the updates on Linux Mint. Of course, uh, Windows 10 support is ending very soon. And I have recommended many people, unless you have a real specific reason to stay on Windows, to switch over to Linux Mint. And we've done a lot of videos about how to install Linux Mint. But what is kind of lacking in a lot of the market is how do you maintain a Linux computer? How do you keep it secure? I mean, it's not like Windows where it just automatically updates itself. Well, you can actually set it to in many Linux distributions. Uh, but we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about this. But let's go back and first talk about your options. If you you are running Windows 10 and your support ends October 14th. If you can update your system to Windows 11 and you're happy doing that, that is certainly an option that is worth doing for many people. Uh, but if your computer does not support it, one of the big problems they're having right now is they're trying to push over to these expensive Copilot Plus PCs that are fully embedded with even more AI than your Windows 10 computer has gotten in recent updates. Some people like the AI. Most people in my experience really don't. It's just being hoisted upon you. Um, so if you are buying a new Windows 11 computer, uh, probably don't get a Copilot Plus PC unless you really, really know what those features are and want them. And I would say if you have to go out to buy a new computer because your system is not supported on Windows 11, I will highly recommend you seriously consider switching to Linux instead. It's going to be a lot cheaper in the long run. It's going to give you a lot more sanity. And for the average home user, there's not a whole lot that you really need Windows for. Uh, most of the tasks you would do as just a basic home user, you can accomplish with a Linux build. Now, if you do want to keep your Windows 10, there is the extended security support uh, update program. This is extended security updates program, and uh, this is $30, and you can get it for one year as a consumer. There are academic and business ones which go up to three years, but for the basic home users, it's $30 one time for one year of updates. So you can always do that if you're pretty sure you need to switch to Windows but need a little bit more time to save for a new computer. That is a path for you. Now, as I mentioned, we're not going to talk about how to install Linux Mint here. We've covered this in many other videos. Here is a whole guide on it. You can scan this QR code with a phone so you can walk through on your phone as you are managing it. So we're going to start this video with, okay, now you've been using Linux Mint for a couple of months now, and you're noticing this little shield down here has a little dot. That little dot means that there are updates available. So the way Linux works is there are software repositories, and these are secured hashed repositories. They are maintained by universities and companies around the world to get you a local place to download your updates from. They're all very safe, very secure. And so uh, you can see right here, it's telling me that there are, uh, there are 12 different things to update. There's actually going to be quite a bit more. If I push this refresh button here, it will go online and it's going to update everything. And then it's going to report back and say, oh, there are more updates than we knew. The reason is you do need to update your cache uh, you can set it to update your cache automatically. You can even set Linux Mint to install some updates automatically for you, like Windows does. So once this is done updating, we'll go ahead and uh, see what our status is. All right, so once it is done updating the cache, you can see that uh, there are a number of different updates. I think, as I said, 139, I think is what it said. Now, you'll see there's a bunch of different icons in here. It tells us there's three gigabytes of updates. Um, a lot of that's flat packs. We'll talk about that in a moment. But let's talk about the four types of updates. These shields here, these are security updates. So these are something in the software that just needs updated because there's a security bug or a security issue, something like that. Those are generally very important. These are the Linux kernel updates. And the kernel, of course, is the underlying operating system itself. These guys over here are software updates. So these are some form of general software updates that are going to uh, either be versions, bug fixes mixed together. Uh, there's some something going on here. So like I see app port here. This one here was recently found to be a security bug. So their upgrade here is going to be fixing that. And uh, 
These ones down here. Now, this is actually the flat packs, these cubes. These are actually the ones that are taking all of that space. So I can choose what I want to update, upgrade or not just by toggling these on or off. And so you'll see down there, there's 48 updates uh, set up there. And you'll notice if I turn off all of these flat packs here, you'll actually see that three gigabytes is going to drop very, very, very substantially. Well, I like flat packs. You'll notice that some of these flat packs are massively huge and some of them like to update sometimes daily. And that to me is kind of eh. But anyway, we should probably update some of these uh, some of these flat packs anyway. Um, but we'll go ahead and update. Uh, uh, we'll just go ahead and update everything here. I'll just do a full comprehensive video. Uh, so the flat packs, of course, will take the longest to update. Sometimes I will deselect all of those, upgrade the whole system, and then do the flat packs individually. Um, so we are going to do that. But before we actually do that, I do want to talk about, we mentioned earlier, software repositories. This is where Linux Mint is grabbing its information from. Now, sometimes when you open this up, there will be a box up here that says switch to a local repository. And if you click the OK button, it takes you to a software package called Software Sources. And we do need to enter our password to get into our software sources. And this is what tells you where to get updates from. And so you'll see here the... Uh, there's a main, this is the Linux Mint specific ones, and there is a base, this is where the Ubuntu packages come from. This version of Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu. So if you click on this, it's going to sort all of these out by size. I was going to pull this up and I'm going to see, uh, so I'm on this one here is the one I'm on right now. See, it's a little bit uh, faster on that. Oh, James Madison University is pulled up even faster than that. So oftentimes... If Linux Mint is about as fast, I might choose that. Uh, if there's something way faster, I would probably go with that. We'll just go ahead and pick James Madison University here. So now you'll notice that there's a new button up here to update that cache. We're going to look at the Ubuntu ones as well. So this one actually defaults to a UK source. So you might definitely want to change that. So we're at, uh, let's see, Bright Ridge University. JMU's the fastest there. And so this one's actually one of the slower ones, the one it's set to. Let's go ahead and pick this one here. I'll just apply that one there. So now I'm going to upgrade this, and then this is going to upgrade all of that list. So what these are doing is they're comparing the software that is installed on the computer and the software that is available to install in the software manager with the current versions available to install. So after this happens, this update manager might do something different. Uh, it may not, however, just because uh, we just did the upgrade uh, test here in a little bit. Now, I did mention um, it is possible to do some update um, things automatically. This is under your automation tab. You can apply this to update your software automatically. And you can update cinnamon spices automatically. These are uh, these are things like uh, they're they're the little uh, widgets and gadgets that are on the computer. You can say you update flat packs automatically, and then you can also remove obsolete kernels and dependencies automatically. So those are things that you can do. You'll see I do not like running automatic updates. I prefer to have manual control over it. Uh, updating flat packs automatically might actually save me some more time later, but I am going to keep it turned off for now. Here's packages. In addition to basic system updates, you can check for these spices and you can check for flat packs. So if I were to toggle this off, all those flat pack items would not show up in there. And then you can automatically set how frequently do things update. So you can see right here, this thing updates. It, uh, it refreshes the list every about two hours. It's going to check to see if there's new updates. And then show notifications uh, for security and kernel updates. Show it if it's uh, updates been available. So you can set all of those different changes there as well. Okay, so now it's refreshing itself because it does does recognize that we changed the uh, uh, we changed those updates. So you'll see it's about the same. Forty nine, three gigabytes. And we'll just go ahead and update everything all at once. So I'm going to hit the install updates button. 
and we're going to have to enter our password once again. And now it is installing packages. It is, uh, so it's starting with downloading the packages. So it's going to download the packages first, and then it's going to go ahead and install the packages after it does that. Okay, so I'm going to close the details there, and we're going to pause the video, and we're going to come back, and this is likely going to take a significant amount of time because those flat packs do take a long time to update. So we'll go ahead and pause the video here, and then uh, I'm going to come back. Uh, we'll note the time right now is 2.25. We'll see what time it is when this is done updating. So now that it's done downloading the packages, now you're seeing that it's installing them here. This is essentially the same thing that you're going to get if you try and install with the terminal. And we're going to cover that before we wrap the video up. So now that the main system updates are done, now it is doing the flat pack update. So this is the one that's going to take about two gigabytes. Now flat packs are a little bit odd where it says two gigabytes, but it might actually be a little bit less for whatever reason it doesn't actually update everything like it doesn't the reporting on how much space it's going to take is not completely accurate so it might not take two gigabytes of downloads that's something you don't really need to worry about it's a weird quirk of flat packs but you'll see here that it already is downloaded everything now it's downloading another batch of files it's going to keep doing this for probably about another 20 minutes or so so uh, we've already been about 12 minutes in from when we started. So that's actually not bad right now. I'm going to let this keep going and see what the uh, time it takes to finish up the flat packs. So now everything's done. It's, uh, so it looks like it was just under 20 minutes to update everything in the system. So now it says your system is up to date. You need to reboot the system. And so we're going to go ahead and reboot. And then I'm going to tell you about another way that you can update your software. All right, so we have freshly rebooted the system. Let's go ahead and pull this up. It says your system is up to date. If we hit our refresh button, it's going to go back into that cache system, that um, uh, list that we just did. And usually with Linux Mint, there's probably not going to be any updates. There's a small chance, maybe Flatpak or something small will update itself, but it would be fairly rare for that to actually happen. So there it says everything is up to date. Now, Linux has, uh, some people still think that Linux is all about terminals and uh, command lines. And indeed, if you look up questions, oftentimes you will be referred to type some command on the terminal. A lot of the reason for that is, well, a lot of modern Linux distributions, particularly like Linux Mint, do not really require you to use the terminal. Once you actually learn how to use it, it's actually way faster and way easier to uh, use. So let me show you how to do the things that we just did. As far as software sources, I'm still going to do that in the GUI. That's a lot more advanced. But as far as, um, as, far as updating your system... Uh, if you do sudo, this means you're going to do something as a super user. And then we're going to do apt and update. This will update that package cache. We're going to have to enter our password. So it's going into, you'll notice that those are the individual places that we are pulling our, uh, our data from. You see that uh, everything's there. And it's, here it's actually telling us there's actually things that we can upgrade. Uh, which is curious. So maybe that uh, this one is always going to be in absolute real time. It's possible that the Linux Mint Update Manager may not refresh this in real time. So let's go ahead and see what that is. So sudo apt, and then we're going to run list and upgradable. This will tell us what packages can be upgraded. So these are the various packages that actually have updates available. So we have open, uh, OpenSSH, OBS Studio, a few other little things in there. All right, so now if we want to push these updates, we just do a sudo apt upgrade. And this is just going to download things. Now it looks as though the reason these did not actually get packaged is because these have been held back. So that's why these are still here. And there's going to be something uh, involved in the system that the system automatically does. So now that it's telling us this, I'm not going to push it any further. Just be aware if we had not updated the system, that sudo apt upgrade is actually going to 
uh, update everything. And that also would leave these particular ones out. And what this has to do with is this dependency stuff here. Uh, and so what's going on here is that Linux in the good old days, sometimes you might hear the term dependency hell, and this would mean that some dependency is not met for a package. Modern Linux systems can detect those issues and prevent things from updating or from migrating versions which are going to cause you problems. And that's exactly what's going on with all of these. So I am perfectly okay with it telling me this. But that is how you are to update and uh, everything if you wanted to do it all through the terminal, which is super easy to use. It just looks intimidating because it's mostly a wall of text. So there is our video there about upgrades. We'll do another one here soon about Linux kernels and another one about software uh, and installing software on your system. Let us know your thoughts about this in the comments down below.